Hi, Hi friends, friends and families. families. I'm Miss Stephanie. I'm Miss Mandy. And welcome to our Family, family Literacy, Literacy Program. Program, where we come up with creative and exciting ways to get you and your child to love reading and learning together at home as a family. And for today's program, we're going to talk about the book, The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. The Wild Robot by Peter Brown is about a robot named Roz who wakes up on a remote island after a shipwreck. The island is full of wild animals who are initially scared of her. As Roz learns to adapt to her new environment, she builds friendship with the animals and becomes part of the community. The story explores themes of survival, friendship, and finding one's place in the world. Roz learns about nature, and the animals teach her about kindness and the importance of family. The book combines adventure with a thoughtful exploration of what it means to be truly alive. This month, read The Wild Robot together as a family. Choose a regular time for reading, such as before bedtime or after school, to make it a special part of your day. Alternate between reading aloud and listening. This helps kids practice their reading skills and keeps them engaged. Pause to talk about the characters, plots, and ask questions like, how do you think Roz feels right now? Connect the story to your own experiences. For example, discuss how Roz's challenges relates to the things your child might face and how they handle them. After finishing each chapter, discuss what you learned and how the story's themes might apply to your own lives. By making reading interactive and fun, you'll help foster a love of books and storytelling in your child. All right, so now it's time to play a game called Roz Says. This is very similar to Simon Says. Same rules apply. So for example, Roz is gonna give us an instruction to do but she has to say, Roz says, and then we do that action. But if she doesn't say Roz says, and you do the action anyway, you're out for that round. Ready to play? Yeah, let's go. Hello, and welcome to Roz Says. For those who don't know, I am Roz. I will be giving you some actions to do. And only do those actions when I say, Ross says. If you do the actions when I don't say, Ross says, you are out for that round. Ready to play? Yeah. Okay. Ross says, touch your head. Ross says, touch your elbow. Ross says, touch your knee. Now touch your elbow. Ross says, touch your head. Ross says, touch your elbow. Ross says, touch your knee. Now your elbow. Nothing gets past you. <laughs> Round two. Ross says, jump. Ross says, stand on one leg. Ross says, jump. Ross says, touch your elbow. Touch your head. Uh, Aww. <laughs> Catch you there. Better luck next time. <laughs> Round three. Ross says spin to the left. Now spin to the right. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll help you out. <laughs> Ross says spin to the left. Ross says spin to the left. Ross says touch your elbow. Ross says spin to the left. Stop. <laughs> Better luck next time. <laughs> Ross says jump up and down. Ross says stop. Ross says step on your right foot. Ross says step on your left foot now. Ross says touch your left elbow. Ross says touch your right elbow. Jump. <laughs> Ross says spin around. Ross says stop. Ross says cover your eyes. Ross says spin around. Ross says stop. 
Ross says, do, do one jumping, jumping jack. jack. <laughs> <laughs> Ross says, point to the person next to you. Not now point to yourself. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Good job, job Mandy. <laughs> Ross says, jump. Ross says, spread your arms wide. Reach up to the sky. <laughs> Good job. Thank you for playing. Ross says. And if you want at home, thanks for playing. All right, families, so now we're going to read the first two chapters of The Wild Robot. And you can try this at home. You guys can read the story together. You can try it off and on. Maybe one person read one paragraph, or you could just read the whole thing aloud to the person that you're sitting with at home. So Manny and I are going to trade off. We're going to each okay. read a paragraph, mm -hmm. and you guys can follow along with us. Sounds Ready? Good. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and turn to the first. So chapter one, the ocean. Our story begins on the ocean with wind and rain and thunder and lightning and waves. A hurricane roared and raged through the night and in the middle of the chaos, a cargo ship was sinking down, down, down to the ocean floor. And the ship left hundreds of crates floating on the surface. But as the hurricane stretched and swirled and knocked them around, the crates also began sinking into the depth. One after another, they were swallowed up by the waves until only five crates remained. Oh gosh, so they're in a hurricane. Have you ever experienced being in a hurricane? No, no? and I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds really scary. Yeah. By morning, the hurricane was gone. There were no clouds, no ships, no land in sight. There were only calm water and clear skies, and those five crates lazily bobbing along in ocean currents. And days passed, and then a smudge of green appeared on the horizon. And as the crates drifted closer, the soft green shapes slowly sharpened into hard edges of wild, rocky island. Ooh. What do you think the green shapes are? Yeah, what are those green shapes? Do you guys know? I don't know. Do we keep reading and find out? Yeah. Okay. The first crate rode to shore on a tumbling, rumbling wave and then crashed against the rocks with such force that the whole thing burst apart. Now, reader, what I haven't mentioned is that tightly packed inside each crate was a brand new robot. Mm. The cargo ship had been transporting hundreds of them before it was swept away in the storm. Now only five robots were left. Actually, only four were left because when the first crate crashed against the rocks, the robot inside shattered to pieces. Oh no, yeah, just four. Mm -hmm. So the same thing happened to the next crate. It crashed against the rocks and the robot parts flew everywhere. Then it happened to the next crate and the next. Robot limbs and torsos were flung onto edges. A robot head splashed into the tide pool. A robot foot skittered into the waves. And then came the last crate. It followed the same path as the others, but instead of crashing against the rocks, it sloshed against the remains of the first four crates. And soon more waves were heaving it up out of the water. It soared through the air, spinning and glistening until it slammed down onto a tall shelf of rock. And the crate was cracked and it crumpled, but the robot inside was safe. Yay! It's right inside here. All right, so that's the end of the first chapter. Mm -hmm. What did you think about what happened so far? Mm, 
I think it's very interesting. Like, looks like the last robot is the survival of the ro- all the robots, and I think it's gonna come out from the box. You guys think it's gonna come out of the box? Okay, nothing's wrong with them. Let's see. Chapter two: The Otters. The island's northern shore had become something of a robot gravesite. Scattered across the rocks were the broken bodies of four dead robots. They sparkled in the early morning light, and their sparkles caught the attention of some very curious creatures. Oh, look at those creatures! Do you know what they are? Do you have yeah. an idea, Mandy? I think I know. They yeah. are otters. <laughs> <laughs> A gang of sea otters was romping through the shallows when one of them noticed the sparkling objects. The otters all froze, and they raised their noses to the wind. Can you raise your noses to the wind? But they smelled only the sea, so they cautiously crept over the rocks to take a closer look. The gang slowly approached a robot torso. The biggest otter stuck out his paw, swatted, swatted, swatted the heavy thing, and quickly jumped back. But nothing happened. So they wiggled over to a robot hand. Another brave otter stuck out her paw and flipped the hand over, and made a lovely clinking sound on the rocks. And the otters squeaked with delight. And they spread out and played with robot arms and legs and feet. Now, can you imagine what that <laughs> must look like? Seeing these otters on the island and there's like arms and legs, and they're just messing with them. Yeah, like Lego pieces. Like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be really crazy to see. More hands were flipped, and one of the otters discovered a robot head in a tide pool, and they all dove and took turns rolling it along the bottom.、Mm. And then they spotted something else. Look over, overlooking the gravesite was the one surviving crate. Its sides were scraped and dented, and a white gash ran across its top. The otters scampered up the rocks and climbed onto the big box. Ten furry faces poked through the gash, eager to see what was. What they saw was another brand new robot, but this robot was different from the others. It was still in one piece, and it was surrounded by spongy packing foam. And the otters reached through the gash and tore at the foam, and it was so soft and squishy.、Mm. And they it, they squeaked as they snatched at the fluffy stuff. Shreds of it floated away on the sea breeze, and it. And in all the excitement, one of their paws accidentally slapped an important little button on the back of the robot's head. So, what do you think that button does? Click. It took a while for the otters to realize that something was happening inside the crate. And to answer your question, they might turn on the robot. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> But a moment later. They heard it—a low, whirring sound. Everyone stopped and stared, and then the robot opened her eyes. I just got goosebumps. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so if you guys want to find out what happens next, keep reading at home. And also, if you want to hear the audio version, there is one available on YouTube. And so we'll go ahead and put that link in the description box for you below. So enjoy reading the wild robot.
All right, family, so we have a special surprise for you. We are going to be raffling off a AMC gift card worth $75 so you can take the whole family to go see the wild robot in theaters. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start the raffle and we're going to name a lucky winner. Okay, here we go. All right, so Miss Mandy's going to draw a lucky winner. Let's see who it is. Okay, I'm going to shake, shake, shake first. I'm going to close my eyes. Yeah, and I'm going to take. Okay, this one. It's Jia Yun Su. <gasps> you guys are Congratulations! Yay. We'll mail it to your house. Have fun. Bye. All right, families, I hope you enjoyed this month's program with us and discover a new way to read books at home and makes it fun. All right, and don't forget to keep nurturing that love of reading because every story that you guys share brings the family closer together. Mm. Yeah, yep. We'll see you at the next video. Bye. <laughs>